What is going on everyone? This is Jacob Amaral here. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about what is the best brokerage when it comes to algo trading or basically using trading bots to automatically invest uh, your money. So we're gonna be talking about a lot of the most popular brokerages like Interactive Brokers, TD Ameritrade, Alpaca, Robinhood, Webull. And if you stick to the end of the video, I'll be talking about which brokerage I use and why I think it's the best out there, okay? So let's get started. So number one, the most popular brokerage worldwide is none other than Interactive Brokers. Interactive Brokers has support in over 100 countries. They also are the most valuable on the stock market when it comes to, um, you know, brokerages that have IPO'd. So Interactive Brokers is worth over $20 billion on the stock market. So they have cash to spend. They've been successful for a long time. And they were one of the pioneers of actually building algo trading and, and you know allowing software to buy and sell different assets based on logic. So they've been a, probably the biggest pioneer in this space and one of the first, if not the first, setting up their infrastructure to allow algorithmic trading. So Interactive Brokers supports pretty much any asset class you can think of, stocks, options, futures, Forex. You can trade it all through their platform both manually and building algo trading uh, systems for interactive brokers, okay? I don't think they support cryptocurrencies, obviously, most of these brokerages don't. And they have a very easy to use API. Uh, they have documentation on Python, C Sharp, C++, Java, even Excel to build trading bots. And they also have a REST API, R-E-S-T API as well. Um, the biggest requirement for interactive brokers is you must be running their software on that computer to make the API calls. Okay, you need to be running TWS or IB Gateway live while you make those calls. So um, if you're running this over the cloud, you know, you need to ensure that you download and are running, you know, either IB Gateway or TWS live to make those API calls, okay? It is a little frustrating if you wanna scale and run multiple bots, you need kind of, you know, a computer per bot or per multiple accounts. Um, but you know, with AWS and, and Azure, you can easily scale and just, you know, download, um, their software per computer and run those API calls. Okay. Um, now in terms of commissions, you do pay commissions. IB interactive brokers does have free commissions if you use their app with IBKR, but if you're going to use an API, they don't support the free commissions with the API. So you will pay commissions if you're using, um, you know, their API. It's very extensive, you know, I used to use it myself before I switched brokerages. At the end of the video, you'll find out which broker I use. But yeah, very, very, you know, decent platform. I did have, earlier on, I did have some connection issues with NinjaTrader where sometimes on Sundays at midnight, it would disconnect and not reconnect. That has since been fixed with the new NinjaTrader update. Um, but other than that, I have nothing good to say about interactive brokers. Number two, probably the next biggest in, uh, brokerage when it comes to, especially in, in um in the west is td ameritrade so td ameritrade um, is actually owned or a separate entity of toronto dominion which is a bank here in canada and td ameritrade is a very popular brokerage i'm sure a lot of you viewers watching use td ameritrade and, and the thinkorswim platform and they do have an api to make algorithmic trades to you know automatically invest for you their api is through websockets meaning unlike interactive brokers you don't have to download anything to make API calls. You simply make an API call once you're authenticated. Um, it's really cool because they use OAuth, which is basically you log in once through TD Ameritrade's website and they give you a token and then you can use that token to make API calls. And you know, it's free, commission free as well, right? That's another benefit TD Ameritrade has over Interactive Brokers. It's all commission free. Um, I would say the biggest cons with TD Ameritrade is definitely connection issues. I've had a lot of issues with NinjaTrader uh, once again, which is one of the platforms I use to um, place my trades through um, algorithms, uh, you know, disconnecting overnight or saying it's connected, but I'm not getting any real time data. Um, so far, they're kind of resolving it. So I don't think it's on TD Ameritrade's end, but, um, you know, I've used, I've, I've built many web platforms using TD Ameritrade and, you know, it's been worked really well. Now I've only traded stocks on TD Ameritrade. I haven't tried trading other assets like futures and Forex and options through TD Ameritrade, because I know you can, if you use Thinkorswim, I'm sure you can trade options, futures, and um, Forex through, you know, their user interface, but I have not tried with their API. From, from what I read online, you can only trade stocks, but I could be wrong. So in the comments below, if you use the TD Ameritrade API, 
let me know if I'm wrong or right, because some people are saying you can only trade stocks with their API and they don't support futures or Forex or options um, yet. Um, so anyways, TD Ameritrade is number two, one of the most, you know, sec probably the second most popular. Obviously it only works for US citizens. So if you're Canadian like me or international, you cannot use TD Ameritrade unless you're a US citizen and have a US um, SIN number, okay? So that's number two. Number three is Alpaca. This is kind of the new kid on the block. And the cool thing about Alpaca is it's it's really developer focused, okay? They have only a web dashboard. It's super easy to use, but they have a lot of documentation when it comes to algorithmic trading, you know, setting up your account, setting up your connection, placing and buying trades. That's kind of their focus from the get go as developers where, you know, platforms like Robinhood and Webull, their uh, target customer is kind of the average Joe, doesn't know how to code. They just want to easily to be able to buy and sell stock. So um, Alpaca from the get go is really pushing um, its API, its documentation, and really its its goal customer is kind of developers like you and me, okay? Um, from what I read online, um, they do support international clients, but you must deposit over 25,000 US, I believe. So if you're a US citizen, you're okay, you can deposit whatever. I don't, I don't think they even have a minimum, but they might, the minimum might be $500, I'm not sure, but they have a really low minimum if they do but they probably don't. But if you're international or Canadian like me, um, apparently you have to deposit 25,000 US or more to open an account. So they're kind of not, you know, worldwide friendly. They're only friendly to kind of the US. But yeah, I've used their documentation and built probably about three or four trading systems with them. And uh, they're, they're great so far. I think they only support stocks. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure they only support equities uh, or stocks, same thing. And um, their documentation is great. There has been a lot of complaints with one of their data providers, which is Polygon. They might be severing their relationship with Polygon, but to get data, to get you know real-time open, high, low, close data, um, you can either use Alpaca if you fund an account, but if you don't fund an account, you can use Polygon. Uh, but I think they're kind of severing that relationship. So as of recent, I think last week I read an article about that. So. Um, other than that, yeah, I mean, it's a great platform. Their web dashboard is incredibly easy to use. You don't have to download any software. It's all through uh, REST, REST API, so making calls, um, you know, with simple get and post requests. So yeah, Alpaca, number three, um, definitely one of the kind of, you know, more developer focused uh, brokerage, but also super easy and super user friendly to use. So um, if you're a new developer, maybe that's kind of the route you wanna go. Interactive Brokers and TD Ameritrade, are definitely a little bit more daunting at first and they definitely require a little bit more knowledge when it comes to um, setting up their API and you know basic API functionalities. But once you get going, you know, you're, you're pretty much good to go. All right, so before I talk about what brokerage I use, I wanted to talk about Robinhood and Webull. I know a lot of you watching probably use Robinhood and Webull and you've seen in the past that I've made trading bots for Robinhood and Webull. The problem is Robinhood and Webull don't officially support using APIs. And if you look in Robinhood's terms of service, it's actually against their terms of service to um, make, to, to basically, you know, use software to, to trade on your behalf. With that being said, some of some developers in the, you know, open source community on GitHub have found ways to place trades and to use their APIs to automate trades. Okay. So they're not officially supported by Robinhood or Webull themselves. Someone's been able to find what web requests to send and you can use their GitHub to make trades. So I don't recommend it because you can probably get one working and it might work for six months. It might work for a year, but you know, because they're not officially supported Robinhood or Webull, you know, if they notice you're using these, these APIs over a certain amount of time, and especially if you're trading more capital, they might just shut you down. Right? So that's kind of, you know, a really risky way to trade and probably not worth it. It's just probably easier just to switch to Interactive Brokers or TD Ameritrade or Alpaca instead of using Robinhood or Webull to make trading bots, okay? Hopefully in the future, they open it up. Um, I've contacted Webull about it. I haven't heard any response. I emailed them about a month ago, so I don't know what's going on with them, but I know Robinhood, it's against their terms of service. You know, hopefully that changes in the future, but I don't recommend building trading systems for them, but you can if you want to. And if you just do a simple Google search for Robinhood API or Webull API, um, you know, you can find some open source GitHub projects and kind of start using their code. All right, so you've made it to the end of the video and this is where I talk about what brokerage I use. So earlier I did mention I used to use interactive brokers, but recently I have switched. The reason why I switched was the margin requirements for futures and interactive brokers is definitely pretty strict. You need a lot of capital to be trading these futures because they're leveraged. You need to kind of 
the broker is covering the majority of the contract price and you need to have upfront liquid cash in your account to kind of, you know, give them that safety net that they're, you know, they don't have to margin call you essentially. So Interactive Brokers is one of the most strict. And um, because I use the NinjaTrader platform, Interactive Brokers was kind of my only option as a Canadian. Um, TD Ameritrade only works for US citizens. And then all the other brokerages pretty much, even NinjaTrader, they also have a separate entity, which is a brokerage themselves. They only accept um, US citizens. Now I was able to find a brokerage that actually accepts US citizens um, through researching online. And the brokerage I use is called GFF Brokerage. They're a, a low day trading margin futures trading brokerage, and they work 100% with uh, NinjaTrader, which is great. And they also have a user interface too through Ironbeam to place futures trades as well, okay? So um, the biggest benefit to them is one, they're low day trading margin. So you can trade more futures contracts during the normal trading hours than you could with interactive brokers and have less capital. Obviously, you know, that's increases risk, right? So you need to be aware of that just because you can trade more and they're a low day trading margin brokerage. Um, you don't, you know, it's more risk, right? Potentially more reward, but more risk. Um, and you can obviously lose more than what you put in. So you need to be aware of that. Um, if you're smart with your algorithms and your trades, you can use that to your advantage, but that takes a while to kind of learn and you definitely want to start small um, and keep your, keep your risk low. So that was the number one big benefit. I could trade a little bit more and leverage more uh, with them. Their commissions are on par with Interactor Brokers. I don't think they're like significantly less, uh, but they're definitely not more. So they're about the same, which was good. And number three too, the biggest thing was they use what's called, I believe they use CQG in terms of their data feed. So a data feed is something that is supplying you data to get real-time stock data where, you know, you're getting the close price and volume in real time as well as historical. And it's really, really stable. Like I've never had to reconnect to it. And I've been running my trading systems for over a month and I haven't been, I, I haven't needed to reconnect once where with interactive brokers, like I said, generally every Sunday, you know, Monday when I would come into the office, I'd have to reconnect and make sure my strategies are all good. You know, it was kind of a pain sometimes, even though it only happened once a week. Um, so with this new kind of data feed that GFF, GFF brokers use, it's extremely stable. And that's what I like a lot. Um, and you know, their, their user interface is pretty good. You know, funding my account was relatively quick and um, their customer support is incredible. So the, they're definitely, you know, always there to, to help you and you can call them. And it's, you know, it's, it's a very, very professional for sure. So if you want to sign up for them, for GFF brokers, they are, it's the first link in the description below. Um, I definitely, you know, recommend it. And it's what I use personally. Um, I believe they only support futures. So if you're looking to trade stocks or other assets, you'll kind of have to look for another option. But because I, I specifically trade futures, um, they, they kind of work perfect for me. Okay. If I missed a brokerage or if you want me to talk about one and do some research, leave a comment below on what brokerage you use. If I missed your brokerage, please leave a comment below and I'll make a separate future video on that brokerage reviewing their kind of API and, and seeing how well they work because I'm always interested to try new options and you know kind of see what's around and kind of browse around. So anyways, that's the video guys. I hope you found a ton of value and we'll see you next week.